Hey guys, it's Weezy here. Today, I want to talk about some changes in the MCC update as of July 2023. Specifically, the Megalo changes, some of which are not included in the change log. You might be asking why I'm choosing to talk about this now, when the update is a month old at the time of this video's release, and that's because that RVT recently updated to also include these changes in Megalo, specifically in Halo Reach. Now, you may notice as I look around the sky here that things look a bit different than usual. Uh, that's because there's actually a giant traffic cone surrounding us right now. This thing is massive. It's so massive, in fact, that it was impossible until the recent update, which updated the numeric storage from 16-bit to 32-bit. Now, what this means in better terms is that you can now store numbers as high as 2.14 billion whereas the previous highest number was 32,767. This notably applies to scale. So now, instead of the max scale being around 330 times scale, it's now upwards of 20 million times scale. Now, our traffic cone is nowhere near that big right now. I think it's at about 10 million percent, which is around about 100,000 times its normal size. For comparison, here's the old maximum size, and you can see that while the traffic cone is quite big, it's uh, it's not quite as big as the other one. Now, numeric storage doesn't just apply to scale, it's just very noticeable with scale, but it does apply to anything that stores a number. So you could have 2.1 billion speed readings, for example, although you'd never find something that's quite that fast. Anyhow, the MCC update also gave us access to new variants for all sorts of different vehicles, and now that RVT is updated, we can access them with RVT. So first we have a few different Falcon variants. Here is the Campaign Falcon with its turrets removed. It's not exactly a troop transport Falcon because it still has the nose gun, but it's pretty close, and it is a variant that exists in the campaign. Next we have the Grenade Launcher variant. We already had access to this with the Thorage update, but it is nice that we can access it with scripts now. And finally, we have the multiplayer variant. This variant in particular will be great for some scripts because previously, you could only script spawn falcons with the extra seats, and the multiplayer falcon was forge only. So now, we can script spawn the falcon, remove its turrets, and have a falcon with only one seat, the driver's seat, and we don't need to rely on the map itself having the falcon present. This will be great for certain custom vehicles that use the Falcon as the base that only want the driver's seat to be occupied. In the same vein, you can now also spawn a Warthog without its turret, making it much easier to use for custom vehicles with Warthogs as the base. Next up, the two variants for the Shade Turret have been added, that being the Furod Cannon and the Anti-Air Shade Turret, which means we can finally spawn an AA Shade Turret without having extra scripts required to make it function properly. And of course, it can take damage properly, which was an issue with previous AA shade turrets made with scripts. Some variants for the big semi truck have been added as well. So first of all, we have the flatbed variant. This one's pretty cool because you could spawn in Forge previously, but now it can spawn it with scripts. Even cooler, though, are the other two variants, which you can't spawn in Forge at all. These are the Freight variant and the Tanker variant. These variants were seen in Campaign before, but it is nice that we can finally have them in multiplayer as well. And finally, there's also a Small Bed variant. The Small Bed is interesting because it can be used much more easily with custom vehicles. For example, slapping onto the back of a Warthog, and the Warthog will still drive much better than it would with the normal size flatbed on it. It is worth noting that there are supposed to be small versions of the freight and tanker as well, but they weren't properly set internally, so even if you try to spawn them, it won't work at all. But anyhow, next up we have destroyed vehicle variants, which there are quite a few of. Unfortunately, due to the way they're handled internally, they aren't exactly like the destroyed variants you find in Forge. As an example, here's the destroyed Warthog variant you can spawn with scripts, and here's the Forge version. You'll notice right off the bat that the Forge version looks different and also emits smoke, while this one just has the model. So unfortunately, that means no spawning in smoke via scripts, which is unfortunate, but there are quite a few vehicle variants that are destroyed, 
although not every vehicle supports this. More importantly though, because these are still technically vehicles, they have a few strange properties to them. So first of all, you can see that there's a prompt to flip the vehicle, and indeed you can actually flip it. If I start shooting the vehicle, you'll notice that the destroyed vehicle is taking damage, and after enough damage, the destroyed vehicle will get destroyed again. Most of the time it'll just set on fire, but sometimes it'll spawn extra pieces or even just disappear outright. Now fortunately you can't drive these vehicles, which is good because they're supposed to be destroyed after all. Right? Well, with scripts you can get into this warthog for example, but with some of the vehicles, they just let you in. What's interesting too is that in the case of the scorpion and the falcon, the hitboxes used are actually the hitboxes for the destroyed variant and not the normal vehicle like you'd expect. Now, I actually don't mind this behavior too much because it's still possible to put these vehicles in positions where you can't flip them and can't get inside of them. It would just take a bit of extra scripting and forging. With that said though, I doubt that the or 3 intended for us to be able to drive them like this. But still, I hope they don't patch it because this is just hilarious. You might be wondering how I'm able to get in the Warthog by simply crouching for a second. And that's due to one of the new actions that was backboard from Halo 4, called Get Button Time. Get Button Time works based on what the button does, so you can get the crouch button, the melee button, and so on. The issue here is that the buttons only work for controller, it doesn't detect keyboard inputs. And Thiefo 3 has stated that the action is more of a debug solution than anything, so it shouldn't be used in actual game types. Plus, there is desire to either change the action in the future to fix it up, or to implement a solution that's similar. Because of this, I can't recommend using this for actual game typing, but rather for things like proof of concepts and whatnot. Things that you wouldn't distribute to the public. Back to vehicles, we have new variants of the Phantom, of all things. So we have a variant that has the chin gun but no plasma turrets, a variant that has no turrets at all, and a variant with just the plasma turrets. I think the turretless variant is quite interesting, because even though you can already spawn it in Forge, being able to spawn it with scripts now does increase scripting potential just a little bit. I did try the no chin variant on the pelican as well, but it doesn't work. In fact, the only new variant for the pelican is the damaged variant. Now, you would think that the damaged variant would apply to many vehicles, but no, it's just the pelican. And as a side note, I am using the scenery version of both the Pelican and the Phantom to show off these variations, as opposed to their real vehicle versions. Finally, for new variants, we have the No Blade variant for the Energy Sword. As you can see, it's a sword without a blade, just the hilt. Now, this looks very cool, but it does still have the damage of a sword and leaves the same marks as a sword, although without the look and sound. More importantly though, this no blade look is only on host. All clients will see the sword as normal, regardless if the code to spawn it was on their own machine or not. Although, the sword on the ground does appear as a no blade variant for clients as well. Which is really disappointing because it kind of makes this variant almost useless. I mean sure, you can use the hilt for scenery purposes, but you can't actually use it as a weapon. At least one that's distinguished from the sword itself. Moving on from variants, another new action that was backported from Halo 4 is the ability to hide an object. This hides objects in a similar manner to how objects are hidden when attached to something like a hill marker, which doesn't render, except in this case the object is not attached and can move as normal. This does have some side effects, like vehicles not having sounds when shooting, and players not having sounds at all when they're hidden. Also. Many hidden objects don't respond to splash damage of any kind. Once again though, this action is only on the host. I can see it being useful for single player puzzle maps and things of that nature, but unless it works on the local machine when executing the code on local, I don't see much of a multiplayer use for this yet. Finally, there's a new action that lets you set what a player's respawn vehicle is. It works exactly as you expected. You set the respawn vehicle, and the player respawns in it. 
I believe this functionality actually existed way back in the Halo Reach beta. I remember Vengeful Vadim mentioning it in his video on the beta. So it's really cool that they brought this back. Although, you could already force players in the vehicles as soon as they spawn, but now it's nice to not have to know when they spawn with scripts. You can just have the action. So, those are all the new features. Overall, I'm pretty happy with things, although most of the new actions I wish had more functionality. Especially the get button time action. That has serious potential, and if they can get it working off host and for keyboard users, that would be great. That's gonna do it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, and before I close out, I'm gonna give a little sneak preview of a project that I've been working on. Enjoy.